Tonight's headlines, House begins deliberations on 2023 budget. Florida leaves over 33 million pesos infrastructure damage. Dengue cases hit 118,526. LPA to bring scattered rain over eastern Luzon. Diesel and gasoline price hike seen. Revitalizing MSME among Marcos's priorities. And government to borrow 1.16 trillion pesos in 2023. Good evening. Today is Friday, August 26, 2022. I am Elmer Navarro Manuel and this is Tribune News on Q. Here are the stories for this evening. The House of Representatives on Friday kicked off the deliberations on the proposed 5.268 trillion peso national budget for 2023. Officials from the Development Budget Coordination Committee attended the hearing to brief the members of the House Appropriations Committee about the Marcos Administration's National Expenditure Plan, which was submitted to Congress on Monday. The DBCC is composed of the Department of Budget and Management, National Economic and Development Authority, Department of Finance, and Banco Central ng Pilipinas. Budget Secretary Amena Pangandaman said the proposed budget for 2023 was crafted based on and in support of the Marcos administration's eight-point socio-economic agenda. She said the proposed budget aims to address the immediate and pressing concerns of all Filipinos in the near and medium term. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council said Friday that damage to infrastructure due to severe tropical storm Florita has been estimated to be over 33 million pesos. The NDRRMC said a total of 31 damaged infrastructures were recorded with an estimated cost of 33,700,000 pesos and of the total number 24 were the Ilocos region or were in Ilocos region and 7 in Cagayan Valley. The agency said a total of 33 houses were damaged in Ilocos Region, Cagayan Valley, and the Cordillera Administrative Region. At least 7,510 families or 71,468 individuals were affected during the heavy rains and flash floods brought by Florita. Meanwhile, a total of 1,031 individuals from the Ilocos Region, Cagayan Valley, and Cordillera were preemptively, or preemptively evacuated. The Department of Health on Friday said at least 118,526 dengue cases were logged from January 1 to August 6, 2022, which is 153% higher compared to the reported cases during the same period in 2021. The UH officer in charge, Maria Rosario Vergere, said at least 29,586 dengue cases were recorded in the recent period from July 10 to August 6. Based on the recent period, the DOH said the region with the highest number of cases are in Central Luzon with 6,035, followed by the National Capital Region with 4,045 and Western Visayas with 2,946. The Health Department said 10 out of 17 regions such as Cagayan Valley, Central Luzon, Calabarzon, Mimaropa, Western Visayas, Central Visayas, Sambuanga Peninsula, BARMM, and Cordillera, or Cordillera Region and NCR. Tribune News on Q will be back after these reminders. Magandang araw mga katribu! Narito na ang mga makakasama nyo tuwing umaga sa programang Gising Na. Roy Pelovelo, Comfy Manalo, Vernon Velasco, Kim Sancha, at Chirk Balagtas. Abangan ang programang Gising Na sa Facebook page ng Daily Tribune. Ilabas ng mainit na kape at samahan kami sa inyong pag-almusal, mga katribo. Sama-sama natin alamin ang mga natatagong istorya sa mga latest na kaganapan sa loob at labas ng bansa. Aaring nyo rin ibahagi sa amin ang inyong opinion via Daily Tribune Facebook page at Tribune Now sa YouTube. Makichika na rin sa latest showbiz happenings, mga katribo. Kaya naman, magsama-sama po tayo sa Gising Na!
In other news, State Weather Bureau Pagasa reported that a low-pressure area will bring scattered rain showers and thunderstorms over the Bicol region, Eastern Visayas, and Quezon Province. The LPA was spotted 135 kilometers east-northeast of Virac, Catanduanes as of 3 p.m. Pagasa warned that the moderate to at times heavy rains from the LPA could cause flash floods or landslides. The rest of the country could meanwhile expect partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers and thunderstorms due to the intertropical convergence zone and localized thunderstorms. Luzon can expect light to moderate winds from the northeast to northwest with slight to moderate coastal conditions, while the rest of the country would experience slight to moderate winds from the east to northeast with slight to moderate coastal water conditions. In business, motorists are bracing for another round of increase in the pump prices of petroleum prices in the coming week. Citing oil trading from August 22 to 25, an, an oil industry source said that the price per liter of diesel may increase by 5 pesos and 40 centavos to 5 pesos and 70 centavos. Meanwhile, gasoline prices may go up by 1 peso and 30 centavos to 1 peso and 60 centavos per liter. Department of Energy Oil Industry Management Bureau Director Rino Abad confirmed that a price hike looms next week, with diesel prices expected to increase by more than 5 pesos per liter while gasoline may be hiked more or less 1 peso per liter. Abad said that factors which affected the movement of oil prices in the world market include the increasing demand for fuel in the United States and Europe, amid the lingering concerns of supply shortage brought by the Russia-Ukraine war. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. on Friday said that his administration would help small and medium-sized enterprises recover from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. During the Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Summit 2022 at the Manila Hotel, Marcos recognized the sector's critical role in the country's economic regeneration, job creation, and poverty reduction. He added that the government would harness the strengths of various sectors to ensure a more cohesive government approach in creating a more sustainable environment for all MSMEs and all important stakeholders. He also acknowledged that the success of MSMEs is crucial to fortifying the foundation of the economy. And Department of Finance Secretary Benjamin Jokno said on Friday that the Philippine government is expected to borrow more than 1 trillion pesos to cover the projected budget deficit next year. During the House of Representatives budget briefings, Jokna said that total revenue projections in 2023 was at 3.6 trillion pesos against a proposed budget of 5.268 trillion pesos, adding that the projected expenditures is 5.1 trillion pesos and there will be a deficit of 1.16 trillion pesos. He said that 75% of borrowings will be sourced locally while 25% will be from foreign sources. Despite the projected amount of borrowings next year, the finance chief said that the needs for borrowing will decline significantly because they think that there will be no pandemic in the near future. To recall, the finance chief earlier said that the government would no longer borrow as much as what was done during the Duterte administration. That wraps up the stories tonight. Catch us again on Monday only here at Daily Tribune's Facebook page. Again, this is Elmer Navarro Manuel and you're watching Tribune News on Q. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay at home. Good night and God bless us all. We would like to thank the following. Araneta, Pag-ibig, SM Supermall, Veteran, Divina Law Offices, ICTSI, Xlog, Globe, Kia, PLDT, Cherry, Tanawan, Prime Homes, RLC, Pure Gold, Peralco, and SM Retail.
percaya kita Sakari deria Papun tang menjola Nasasapit na po na makita ka Ayoko lang sana na ikay matismaya Pasensya na kung ito ang nakasanay ko Pasensya na kung ito lang ang nakayanan ko Pakitin ka at ang masaya Nais lang ay makasama ka Pero butas ang bulsa ko sa barya-barya So high and gone Gusto mo mag Starbucks Sinamahan kita Wala akong order Nakakahiya Tinanong mo ko kung gusto ko ba ng mocha frog Sagot ko sa'yo, ang kape ko yun sa mini-stop Pasensya na kung ito ang nakasanay ko Pasensya na kung ito lang ang nakayanan ko Bakit di ka ako masaya? Nais lang ay mapatawa ka Pero butas ang bulsa ko sa barya-barya Catch the latest news on our website, tribune.net.ph. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tribune Now. Download the Daily Tribune app on Apple Store for iOS and Google Play for Android to get the latest and most comprehensive news online. Daily Tribune invites you to join its vibrant community, Katribu, to get updates on the hottest news on politics, business, sports, lifestyle, and entertainment. Emoticons of the Tribune mascot, Tarsito, are available on our community Viber. 